Emotions are the currency of every business deal because they influence decisions. One way to include emotions in your business content is to use words that express emotions. When it comes to emotional words, you have choices. You can explicitly label emotions for your audience, saying things like you're feeling concerned or worried or excited. Or you can use words that imply an emotion. Picture phrases like market shifts, lost deals, or alluding to a dying business. Which words are more impactful for your buyer's brain? Emotion label or emotion laden words? To answer this question, in one neuroscience study I conducted, I asked global B2B buyers to view a sales presentation related to a tech solution. I divided participants into four groups. Group one saw the sales presentation that included a small percentage of emotion laden words, insisting mainly on logic, not emotion. For group two, we added to the small volume of emotion laden words from group one, a few emotion label words. Group three saw six times more emotion laden phrases compared to group one. And for group four, we doubled the emotion label and emotion laden words compared to group two. I included the emotion label and laden words just in the introduction portion of the presentation because that's where it feels more natural to describe trends and challenges in a way that strongly expresses a vendor's feelings about an issue. So I wanted to see whether these words had any impact on what happened next during the segment when the presenter shared his tech solution and then asked for a follow-up meeting. What did the results show? The buyers who heard a moderate amount of emotion-laden words in group three had the highest long-term memory scores and the best comprehension of the content. This group also showed an approach behavior toward the sales presentation. This is good news because how often can you say that buyers really want to approach a sales presentation? Buyers in group three also showed that the highest level of brain synchronization, meaning they engage with the content in the same way and in a way that was conducive to remembering content. So here are four practical guidelines packaged as one do and three don'ts. Do use a larger volume of just emotion laden words in the introduction section of a sales presentation. So you're just hinting at emotions. In this study, buyers heard an emotion laden phrase every 10 to 15 seconds and the phrases implied negative emotions such as budget challenges, gaps in data, slow and incomplete processes, missteps, or lost business. For B2B buyers, these phrases led to better attention, engagement throughout the presentation, as well as optimal cognitive effort and long-term memory. Don't present a detached introduction in a sales presentation because buyers withdraw from the content and experience a higher cognitive workload. Don't use an abundance of both emotion label and laden words, meaning specifying emotions and hinting at them. This is because buyers' attention and working memory decrease, meaning they do not store information in their memory. And an extremely emotional introduction also puts buyers in a negative state of mind during the solution and follow-up sections of a sales presentation. The combination of emotion label and laden words is also detrimental for non-native speakers, provoking a negative state of mind, more fatigue, and higher cognitive workload. And finally, don't tell buyers how to feel by using emotional label words. Phrases like you're feeling anxious, concerned, frustrated, disappointed did not work. Even though one would expect that telling buyers explicitly how to feel might ensure clarity in how the message is received, buyers' brains were the least synchronized in this condition. This means they would be less likely to collaborate and cooperate to select your solution.